Hello, we are coming to you live from Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary in Lake Huron near beautiful Alpena, Michigan. You have joined us for the second of two exciting live broadcasts. My name is Stephanie Gondula and together we, go, we are going to explore sanctuary shipwrecks, maritime archaeology and the beautiful natural resources of Thunder Bay. Today we are aboard the sanctuary's 50-foot research vessel, the Storm. Earlier this morning, we were headed out to the shipwreck site of the Grecian. Due to technical difficulties, we are now anchored a little bit closer inshore. So we've decided to shift gears, and we're going to focus on the next generation of underwater explorers as we learn about the history and archaeology of the steel freighter Grecian. So where we are today truly was once one of the world's busiest waterways. Just over a hundred years ago, thousands of schooners and hundreds of freighters traveled these freshwater inland seas, helping to build the early industries of America. So to give you a better idea of where we are, there's a map shown up on your screen right now that'll show you where we are in the Great Lakes. That big red box is around Thunder Bay and Alpena. And you can see that anywhere, any vessel traveling on the Great Lakes would have had to pass by Thunder Bay. This next map shows you the result of all that high traffic. As you can see the close-up of Thunder Bay, you can see the numbers, the high numbers of shipwrecks in and around Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. So although we weren't able to broadcast live from the shipwreck Grecian today, because of all the shipwrecks in the sanctuary, we were able to do some reconnaissance on a site closer to shore. In fact, two of our sanctuary maritime archaeologists are coming out of the bay now. So as we let them get aboard and get their gear off, I want to let the viewers watching online around the world, those folks watching from the Coastal Studies Institute in North Carolina, and of course those folks watching in Alpena at the Great Lakes Maritime Heritage Center, I want you guys to know just how you can email in your questions and get real-time answers from our historians and archaeologists. Simply go to thunderbay.noaa.gov and click on the Email Your Questions Now link. Or you can email us directly at thunderstruck at thunderbayfriends.org. That's thunderstruck at thunderbayfriends.org. Remember to include your first name and where you're emailing us from. We're excited to get those questions and we'll be answering those later in the broadcast. So as I mentioned, we are in the middle of dozens, literally dozens of historic shipwrecks. It's no exaggeration that these shipwrecks are truly some of the best preserved and historic shipwrecks in the world. And to give you a better idea of where we are and these amazing cultural resources, we're going to show you a short video to let you dive into the rich history of Thunder Bay. Dive into history at NOAA's Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary and Underwater Preserve. The sanctuary offers a variety of exciting activities featuring the shipwrecks and maritime history of Thunder Bay. Harboring hundreds of historic shipwrecks, the sanctuary stands out as a world-class diving destination. Explore miles of coastline studded with historic lighthouses and scenic views. The maritime history of Thunder Bay has seen Great Lakes vessels progress from Native American birch bark canoes to modern 1,000-foot bulk freighters. Due to its central location on the Great Lakes, Thunder Bay stands out as an integral figure in the growth of America. The sanctuary preserves a wealth of maritime history. Well preserved by Lake Huron's cold, fresh water, the shipwrecks lying on the lake floor are time capsules for both divers and non-divers alike. The sanctuary is a center for research and education. Extensive archaeological research takes place in Thunder Bay to assess the resources here and work for their preservation. These efforts allow researchers to learn more about wrecks in the sanctuary and to discover new ones. 
There is fun for the whole family in Thunder Bay, from kayaking, to sailing, to special events like the Thunder Bay Maritime Festival. The Visitor Center is open daily for an in-depth look into the maritime heritage of the region. Sanctuary Research Collection holds one of the country's largest repositories of Great Lakes maritime historical documents and photographs. Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary and Underwater Preserve offers fun, excitement, and education. Come join us in Alpena, Michigan and explore the depths of Thunder Bay. So now that we know a little bit more about where we are, let's say hello to Russ and Tane, our sanctuary archaeologists. Good afternoon, guys. How was the dive? Excellent, Stephanie. It was fantastic. Good afternoon. Wonderful to see you guys. Our viewers just got a sneak peek into all of the, a lot of the cultural resources we have here in Thunder Bay. One of those really impressive cultural resources is the Shipwreck Grecian. And we've got some underwater footage to take a look at. This footage was taken by the University of North Carolina's Coastal Studies Institute underwater team. And Russ Green, if you could just give us some insight into what we're looking at here. Yeah, absolutely. We're coming up now. Uh, we're on, on the stern of the ship in about 60 feet of water. We just dropped down. Now we're looking at the propeller hub here. Uh, and you can see the propeller blades. There's a burbot. Some of the uh, life that's on the lake bottom and populate shipwreck sites. Great places to fish. Uh, there's a spare propeller actually in the hold of the Grecian and now we're moving up a little bit forward again in about 60 feet of water to the bottom to the very lake bottom is about a hundred feet deep lots of relief on the shipwreck there's the triple expansion steam engine you can count the cylinders here one two three really uh, a technological wonder for its day powered the Grecian on these multiple trips uh, up and down the lakes from the iron ore mines up in Lake Superior moving forward now we see some uh, some more piping leading to the boilers that fueled that steam engine. Dropping now uh, down the holds. This is a great dive. It's an easy uh, wreck penetration dive, so lots of interest here for recreational divers. It's easy to kind of get in and around below decks. See some of the great visibility here. 60, 70 feet, not uncommon in the springtime. Some machinery up forward and what's left of the pilot house. Moving all the way forward now, 300 feet long from where we started is the bow and there's the windlass used to uh, retrieve the anchors of the Grecian and then we're going to end here with some great bow shots there it is uh, looking out towards the uh, towards the front of the ship towards the bow and again we're back up in about 50 or 60 feet of water here great recreational dive steel shipwreck well preserved and a beautiful bow shot as we leave the Grecian Wow, you can really see, looking at that amazing underwater footage, the quality of preservation that we have in the Great Lakes and right here in Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. We have another special guest on board today. Pat Labadee is joining us. He is a maritime historian. He's been studying Great Lakes ships for, for a long time, Pat, over 50 years. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Steph? Good morning. It's afternoon, actually, and we can. the wind has definitely picked up here this afternoon, yes, it but it is still yeah. a lovely day to be out here in Thunder Bay. Can you tell us a little bit more about the shipwreck Grecian? We were looking at some underwater footage. We're going to um, show some historic stills now, and if you could let the viewers maybe compare what we're looking at here. Sure. Uh, Grecian is a really good example of a pre-1900 steel ship. Uh, a ore carrier capable of uh, about 3,000 tons, 4,000 tons of cargo. Uh, she was on her way up the lakes empty to load on Lake Superior when she grounded in the uh, St. Mary's River. And after being recovered from the uh, shoal, she was towed to the shipyards and sunk here mm. on her way. Okay, so what about the Grecian makes it particularly interesting to maritime historians? Well, I think one of the most fascinating things is that it's so well preserved. Uh, the machinery, all of the deck equipment is still in place, and it's just a really great example. It, it's, it's got integrity, and you can also penetrate the wreck. Right. It's uh, really exciting. Right, so it, it does have an amazing history. Now, earlier we were talking with uh, Russ and Tane, who were conducting archaeological work on sites here in Thunder Bay. How, what's your opinion on how history and archaeology work together? Well, that's a good question. 
We know that the ship went down uh, in June of 1906, but we don't know a whole lot about exactly what caused it as far as structural failure. And it's only by examining the wreck that we can establish that. We also have uh, historical records, um, you know, of, of witnesses. Mm -hmm. And so the research together with the archaeology answers some of those questions. Okay, so you as historians and archaeologists, you, you piece together clues to, to tell the wreck story and to tell what life was like back in 1906. You guys are really kind of like detectives, right? Exactly. We love every moment of it. <laughs> Wonderful. And so you take measurements, you draw maps, and you create site plans. In fact, let's take a look at a site plan of the Grecian right now. Yeah, it's interesting because the bow and the stern portions of the ship are intact and upright, but the center portion of it has collapsed. And that's pretty dramatic when you take a 300-foot steel ship and the whole center portion of it is is just collapsed. Oh, wow. uh, fascinating. And this illustrates it very effectively. Yeah, so these are amazing techniques that archaeologists use to study the shipwrecks, these site plans. And ideally, though, archaeologists would use a number of different techniques to record and, and interpret shipwrecks. One of those techniques is um, photo mosaic. So let's take a look at a photo mosaic of the Norman, which is a sister ship of the Grecian. So, Tane, you have created um, a number of photo mosaics, many shipwrecks. Would you tell us what's involved in creating something like this? Oh, yeah. Well, essentially, you're swimming along the shipwreck, taking a series of still images that, on the surface, you actually put together, you splice them together like a giant jigsaw puzzle to create one single Im image of the shipwreck. And so it, it really is an amazing image. I mean, you can really get a feel for the length of that shipwreck, the size of the sister ship of the Grecian, the Norman. And so why are these photo mosaics important? Well, one, for archaeologists, we really, it's that single snapshot, and we could use it to help document the wreck. But for the public, this is their way to experience the wreck if they can't dive. This is it. That's, that's a one. How many images do you think it took? Or, I mean, you did this one. How many images did it take to create this photo mosaic? Uh, probably about 15. Wow, wow. They are really, really impressive shots. What a great way to get a sense of these sites on the bottom of Lake Huron. So to learn and understand just how these photo mosaics were created, two classrooms from across the country, a thousand miles away really, were got the opportunity to work with sanctuary educators at the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary and then also educators from UNC's Coastal Studies Institute to actually undertake this process of creating photo mosaics. They got to create site maps and photo mosaics. So let's take a look at what these students did. A photo mosaic is a bunch of pictures taken and then put into one big picture. And um, a site plan is when a diver goes down and they take measurements of objects that are down. And so when they put it together, they have more of like more detailed. And so together they can use that to figure out, kind of help them how it went down and stuff like that. The importance of photo mosaics is you can see it all at once. And that's always cool to see a big picture of a shipwreck so you can understand what it looks like. But the importance of like site mapping is you get the little details like where fasteners go and where everything is and stuff so it's easy to go back down there and find stuff that you're looking for. Um, the most difficult was in the photo mosaic process was when um, we had to actually hold the camera straight down in the water when we did um, a project where we were in the pool. We had the shipwrecks down and we used the cameras and it was hard to hold the camera straight down to get it perfectly leveled so that it would come out right. Yeah, that looks so cool. Like when it, it looks like one big picture of the ship when you're done. And yeah, that looks really cool. This is probably the best day of class ever. I think the students are going to enjoy and remember this for a long time. So. I just like learning about the shipwrecks and being able to do stuff like this. Okay. Yeah. So you guys have Wow, those students, they, they, it seems like they really got a handle on both of those archaeological techniques, photo mosaics and site mapping. So what are some of the issues that, that you face in creating photo mosaics? Well, it's almost as much as art as it is a science. So you really got to keep that camera pointed straight down. You need to be a constant distance from the shipwreck. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it just, it's very difficult to be swimming along and get those shots. Wow. And these kids seem to have done a, a great job. Yeah, they did an excellent job. Wonderful. And so one of the classes was from Alpena High School, part of Shipwreck Alley, a new class here at the high school. And the other class was Cape Hatteras Secondary School, a group of eighth graders from Buxton, North Carolina. 
And I, it seems, I, I think they learned a lot about maritime heritage. What do you think, Tane? Yeah, they learned a lot about heritage, the lakes, and archaeology. Wonderful. Well, let's take a look at what they thought about our maritime heritage. Oh, here we go. All right. We're going to take a look at actually what they were doing, the processes they went through, and the experiences that they, they really got to participate in. So here we have Tane in one of the classroom sessions. Tane Casserly, maritime archaeologist with the sanctuary, was showing them the process of photo mosaics. And then with the Coastal Studies Institute in North Carolina, we have archaeologist Nathan Richards showing them how to actually map a shipwreck. I mean, these kids got some really great experiences here. Here we are in the pool working with sanctuary archaeologists, and they, they learned how to maneuver. And it's, it's not, as Tane mentioned, it's not an easy job to position yourself to, to take these photo mosaics. These guys got to do it in a pool with some mock shipwrecks and then went back to the lab to piece them all together. Really to, did the whole process from beginning to end. Site mapping here again, and I think they had a good opportunity to compare the two techniques. Wouldn't you say, Tane? Oh yeah, it's great for them to get that experience. Here we are on the beach in Michigan, looking at a freighter. These guys got to map this freighter that actually sank a, a really close to the same year that the Grecian did, 1907. The Fay went down, and then a historic shipwreck in North Carolina, the Corolla wreck. They say that wreck is almost 400 years old. These eighth grade students learning how to map the site and create impressive site maps like the one we saw of the Grecian earlier. And then taking all that information back to the lab and piecing it together. What a lesson. And so not only are these students learning the actual techniques and the methods that archaeologists and historians use, they are also learning the value of our, of our maritime heritage, whether it's on the Great Lakes or off any of our coasts, off the Atlantic coast where these North Carolina students are from. And so we've been talking about how they learned about their maritime heritage and protecting and preserving. And so let's, let's get some comments from the students about what they think about maritime heritage. It's important to preserve maritime shipwrecks because it's a lot of fun to learn about all of them and it teaches you a lot. It's crazy to think that the shipwrecks that are in the bottom of our own Great Lakes, one day there was people walking on that and that's where they worked and lived for a long time and it's just crazy to think that now it's down there and no one really ever goes down there and sees it and a lot of people just don't really know about it. So I think it's very important. One of the great things about the partnership with NOAA and, and AHS is that these students, I feel like they're going to make an actual contribution to your work. And so they have a, a, a great sense of you know, not only what you guys are trying to do here in terms of preserving shipwrecks, but also they have a, a sense of, as, as scientists or historians, you know, what kinds of things are you doing in the water to make sure that these stories are told. So I, I like that application as well. Well, I, I really think we can say these students really got a great lesson in the importance of preserving our cultural heritage. So I, I think it's time that we move to some questions from our viewers. We've got viewers, well, all over the world, we're broadcasting online, and our viewers at the Great Lakes Maritime Heritage Center in Alpena. So the first question is, and this one's directly to Russ, what, and this is from Rowan right here in Alpena. Russ, what is your favorite shipwreck? Man, that's a great question, Rowan. I, it's hard to choose. There's so many great ones. They're deep, they're shallow, they're all different types and sizes. What I'm into lately is exploring these with my family, Rowan, Nat, and Lucy, and checking out some of the shallow water sites that they can visit. Wonderful. All sorts of shipwrecks out there. Let's get another question. How far is the wreck of the Grecian from the shore? Tane? Uh, I think about nine or ten miles. Nine or ten miles. Thank you, Stephanie. That was a great question. Oh, here's a, I think this is a question for you, Pat. Did the Grecian ever have any other names? That's from Sam Murphy. No, Sam, that was kind of common, but the Grecian did not ever have another name. Okay, but that was a common practice, so that's a great question. And there was another ship named the Grecian. Oh. Neither ever had another name. Okay, wonderful. Next question from Chad here in Alpena. What is the University of North Carolina's connection to this dive? Tane? 
Well, we partner with this uh, organization for years and years, especially with the Monitor Nest Being Sanctuary. We work with them there, the professionals, they shoot video, do education. We want to bring them up here to experience what they can do for the people of Alpena. Wonderful. And really cool thing is that those students in North Carolina and the students here in Alpena both live very near National Marine Sanctuaries. There's only 13 in the U.S. They live near Monitor National Marine Sanctuary, the first in the system. And here we are in the 13th in the system, Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Next question from Logan. What What is the diver's favorite part of the Grecian? Russ? Well, you know, Logan, I think it's uh, the stern. If you saw that clip earlier and you're down in the bottom and that big propeller and you look up and 30 feet above you is the stern of that wreck and it gives you a sense of how big some of these ships really were. Okay. A question from Hannah McDonald. Have any artifacts been recovered from the Grecian, Pat? Boy, I'm not aware of any. That was very common until recent years, and mm -hmm. I think people's attitudes have changed. They're much more protective now, okay. and of course there are laws protecting them as well. Okay. I think we have time for, for a few more questions. So the next one comes from Amanda in Alpena. What, excellent question, Amanda. What is growing on the ship? Uh, those would be zebra and quagga mussels. Okay. So an invasive species here in our Great Lakes. Next question. This is great, all these questions. Do we know if human error or weather caused the Grecian to sink the first time? That's from Daniel. Ooh. Pat. I don't remember that. Uh, the ship grounded, though, and my guess is it's almost certainly human error. Yep. The ship was off its course a bit. Right. And remember, there's many, many reasons ships sank here in Thunder Bay. Oh, another excellent question. How much training, I think this is one for Tane, how much training do you need to dive on the Grecian? That's from Emily. Well, it's still within a recreational dive depth, you know, about 90 feet. So uh, any sort of a reputable dive shop in town with a training agency will be able to get you there. Okay, great. We've got time for one more question. What was the cargo tonnage, Pat, this is for you, I think, of the Grecian, and how does that compare to the freighters out there today? That's from Chad in Alpena. Good question. Well, the ship was a 300-footer, and the capacity was probably close to 5,000 tons. Uh, modern 1,000-footers can carry 60,000 tons, and if they could load all the way down, they could carry 80,000. 80,000 tons. In a single cargo. That's amazing. So we, we say this was once the world's busiest waterway. That, that really hasn't changed. It's still a very busy, viable industry here on the Great Lakes. It's just that many ships are now in those big thousand footers. Absolutely. Right. Well, we we are nearing the end. We're actually at the end of our broadcast today. Thank you so much for joining us for our live dive from Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. I want to send a big thank you to our partners, the University of North Carolina's Coastal Studies Institute and also the NOAA Preserve America Initiative. And we'd also like to thank our the classrooms our classroom partners, the, the Buxton class, the K. Powder Secondary School, and Alpena High School right here in Alpena. A lot of work and a lot of great results. And I think that's it. We're going to leave you guys with some really great, some more great Grecian underwater footage. And I hope you've learned a little bit more about our amazing cultural underwater treasures here in America. Check out the National Marine Sanctuaries sites. They're, remember, it's not just Thunder Bay. There's 13 National Marine sites, another and a national monument. Enjoy the footage. If you'd like to learn more, go to our website at thunderbay.noaa.gov or check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Thunder Bay Shipwrecks.